All right, here we go. Richard Dufault. This is my second tutorial. I'm going to be painting uh, actually six of these awesome female war figurines from um, Lead Adventure. Uh, this video will only show you the one carrying the hammer, uh, DWA-17. Uh, here she is. So I, uh, it's going to be 16 minutes of me painting at two and a half speed. Uh, so here we go. So the first uh, first thing I do is, uh, and you saw it beforehand, is the uh, you know basing, uh, base coating, uh, sticking them onto paint pots so you can handle them better. And then uh, after the base coat, I always do a um, a sepia wash. So you can either buy sepia ink washes, or you can make your own. And uh, Lester Bursley shows you how to make your own. So I made my own. Uh, it was actually more expensive, probably probably cost the same, you know, as, as buying a bunch of pots of this stuff, but you end up with huge quantities. So I find that uh, putting an ink wash of uh, a sepia toned ink wash on a model before you paint it really shows the detail and it makes it easier for you to see the detail. And I find paint sticks to it better too. So there you go, sepia wash. So I did the red, and now you you, you might find this, uh, this paint job to be a little sloppy or a lot sloppy. Oh, there's those great wooden spoons. These are like pretty awesome. Uh, fairly sloppy paint job, but that's all right because you're building up layers and go back and, and paint with other colors afterwards, so that's fine. So that was the so most of the paints I'm using are Formula P3 from Privateer. Uh, that was a red. The red was called Cador Red Base. The brown, it's everything that was fairly brown. It's called a Bloodstone for some reason. Brown. Uh, that yellow was also uh, Privateer. Some kind of yellow paint. And uh, yeah, so I figured uh, her dress was all red. Uh, her, you know, her bib or whatever you want to call it was a uh, yellow, and anything that's going to be metal, I just paint it with black. And I've used a fairly watery. I think I mixed it half and half black paint. Again, it's this P3 stuff from Privateer. Uh, mixed it about half and half with a black ink wash. I just sort of painted it on there. It's going to get touched up with silver later on anyway. So uh, I just uh, just went around the model and found everything that was going to be metal, everything that's going to be black, or uh, and painted it with the the black. So here we're doing the flesh tone, and I have to say I'm not I'm not happy with the flesh tones. I'm using this privateer stuff. This is Midland flesh, which is like their middle tone of flesh. Just I don't know. I doesn't seem to. I just don't seem to be having a lot of uh, a lot of fun doing the flesh tones uh, on these models. Was it because dwarven female is supposed to be pale? I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I just I just have a hankering for the old. Games Workshop Flesh Wash, which they used to have, which they don't have anymore. Now they have a bunch of different tones, you know, and it's, it's not as good as the old Flesh Wash. So now when you paint something with flesh and then just put an ink wash over it, uh, I'm using the, the the Reaper, you know, Flesh Washers. I find it just, it's just like, it's just brown. It's kind of horrible. Anyway, got to deal with that. Uh, in the meantime, I put in the very watery black into the collar, and uh, I think I did it around the hood, too. And I just went over there and touched all the buckles and there all the metal stuff. And uh, that's that. Now, I uh, during this, oh, and I was like, oh, I got the blackout, let's do the space. Uh, during all of this, I was also painting five other female figurines in the same series. Uh, three of them carrying crossbows, one of them carrying an axe, one of them with a big horn, and then this one with the hammer. Great, great figurines. I can't, I can't say enough how much these figurines, how great these figurines are. Uh, they're by Lead Adventure Miniatures, lead-adventure.com. Um, here I'm using my ancient pot of mithril silver. I've had it for over, must be over 20 years by now, and I'm just sort of brushing, almost sort of doing a highlight slash dry brush over everything that's metal. You know, it's sort of a first go. Not too worried if I get some all over the place. Because I'm going to go back, and I decided to give the ladies iron rings. You see on their hand, on her right hand there, holding up the hammer, she's got these iron rings on. Because I think dwarves pay the iron price, not the gold price, especially the females. They do all the work. So uh, here's the f the the flesh wash going on. It is fine. It's just I don't know. It doesn't look as good as the old uh, Games Workshop flesh wash. So I thought, screw it. I'm going to put some black ink in there. Oh, I'm doing the black ink on the. Uh, on the, the metal parts and stuff. And I think I, as I was putting it on, I realized, ugh, uh, didn't mix it very well. It's, a, it's the homemade stuff. I find it's not as dark as it could uh, as it could be. 
kind of bluish, so I went there, remixed it, you know, and now it's uh, it's darker. So I'm just kind of washing it over everything that might have a dark shadow in it. So the backpack, you know, even into the under the arms, uh, probably probably gonna you're, you're gonna see me putting this on the face. You know, I'm bringing out some of the detail here, and and I have to say these figs have incredibly great detail in them. You know, you'll see as I as I paint this, the the detail just pops right out. It's really great. Um, I'm not sure if it's because they're dwarven females, but they're fairly ugly. Uh, like you know, they're not they're not uh, they're not beautiful women. Uh, some of them are, and you'll uh, you'll probably see them in the in the picture at the end when I show all six of them. But uh, yeah, this one's fairly ugly. Yeah, so that's the black ink going in there. Still sort of tweaking my camera setup the way I've got it all set up. Uh, it's getting it's getting better. I find I didn't uh, zoom in on the action so much in this one, which made it easier for me to keep it all in focus. So I think this compared to my first miniature painting, everything is much more in focus. Now I know what you're thinking. Good God, I'm putting on too much of this black paint. Don't worry about it. It's a black wash, and I'm going to take most of it off afterwards with a uh, with a, uh, a wet brush. It's going to suck all the paint back off. But um, the red, this this particular red, really takes the black well. And I'm just going right in there, and I've thinned it down with brown ink and water to make it uh, not as dark. But you just go in there, and it just makes everything pop. It's great. It's even a trick you can use with pre-painted minis when you buy them, especially these uh, the new ones from. Um, Pathfinder, the Paizo ones. Uh, I find you buy these miniatures, and they're they're beautifully detailed, and some of them have decals on them, and they look really nice. And uh, you just give them a black wash. You just you know you can almost use that. There's a product you can buy. It's like an army painter. You dip and dunk. You just dunk the whole mini into this stuff and just drip it, and you end up with a really nice. Uh, it's almost like a contrast adjustment in Photoshop. So I went in. So I went in there with this flesh tone, and I did the face, and I thought, eh, don't like the. I like that rolled up blanket to be the same color as the backpack, so I'm going to go in there and change that. And as I went in there, I thought, eh, the backpack's too dark too, so I'm going to go in there and sort of touch that up. So this is sort of the relentless process of me uh, working layers and sort of making decisions as I go along. Probably if I were to paint these figs, you know, like for a client after having painted them before, I'd have a better idea of where I was going, but I... Uh, Decided, uh, you know, a little brown ink going in there. I think these backpacks are looking pretty good. And you'll see in the final model, actually, uh, uh, I, I did this after I finished uh, filming this. I decided the black, the, the blanket wasn't going to be that color anyway, so it's, it's it ends up being blue. I mean, you know, girl's got to have a, her own choice of wool blankets to have. So, I mean, I do a lot of camping, and I've got wool blankets. I have one gray one, and I have a... You know, I have a blue one, <laughs> different colors. My daughter has a red one. So wool blankets don't have to be gray or brown or whatever color that the sheep came in. So now I'm just doing highlights on all of the brown leathery type stuff. And the uh, so she's got sort of a really nice messenger bag underneath, and she's holding it with her hand there. The uh, these figs have sort of this great, great detail, and they have great motion. Like they look like they're in motion, you know, which is really wish some other companies had come up with the concept of good lord these minis are in motion and they'd be uh they'd be better for it so i'm just uh, applying a lighter and i probably put in i just probably just put in flesh color into the brown and some white and uh, just going over everything the at the top edges wherever the light would hit to uh to highlight that's the trick is to paint something in a color and then you mix white paint in or a lighter version of that color uh, and then paint in that uh, on all the spots that are that are raised up, and you end up with a lighter color. So here I'm painting. Um, the, uh, again, we're we're lightening, but I'm painting like straps. Like <laughs> it's pretty marvelous. The uh, everything that she's carrying. Well, she's got a strap somewhere that connects to uh, to other straps, and it's all it's not just sort of stuck onto her clothing. It's actually hanging from a strap that's connected to her harness. So. I decided to make the straps a little darker, and I'm just going in with black ink wash and just uh, ink washing the uh, just the edges, just the you know the ugh, that's too much. It's okay, I'm going to take it off with the uh, hopefully I'll take it off. Um, I'm doing a voiceover after having edited the video, so I'm uh, I'm predicting what I'm going to do 
I think I'm going in here with the um, the mithril silver just to touch up the sword and the really great scabbard. I love the way they have these very Roman, you know, very utilitarian short thrusting swords, which I guess uh, dwarves would use. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you're fighting in tight tunnels underground. Thrusting weapons are what you want, not not axes, unbelievably. So, you know, touching up those iron rings, you know, just sort of touching the buckles and it's all about uh, painting minis in, in the end. It's just all about creating contrast, uh, giving life to your minis, and uh, and uh, highlighting the raised edges uh, because the the minis are very small, and you want to force, you want to make it look like there's shadows in the shadowy areas without having to use a light to do it. I mean, if you were to shine a light directly down on a mini, you'd be like, this mini looks great. But that's just because you're forcing those shadows in there. But in, you know, when you're playing a game or when you're doing other stuff, you just want to make sure that your uh, that your uh, your shadows are actually painted in, and your highlights make those shadows stand out. So here I am painting the uh, the doing some more highlight work and this is just almost uh you know mostly white paint and so I went in there and I decided her her she's an older dwarf so I decided that her hair was going to be white and I'm just doing the highlights on her face you know and the fingers and uh, I I guess I could say that my my painting style is one of these you know looks good from far but when you get really in close there it looks far from good no not like that but um Definitely, uh, my figs. Uh, I paint my figs so that uh, uh, they look good on the table, and uh, they get used in all the games. So once again, anyone who plays in my gaming group, uh, hopefully you won't watch this until after the next adventure, because you're going to meet some female dwarves. You know, so I'm doing the ink wash again, and again. I just I don't like it's just it's very brown and kind of horrible. So I mixed in some black into the ink wash, and I'm going over it again. Really miss that old Games Workshop flesh wash. That stuff was awesome. And so once again, you'll notice that my style is pretty much one of uh, of just going over and over and over. And you know, when I have, oh, I got the blackout. I'll do the base. I'll do this. Oh, I'm doing the eyes. So just filling in the eyes with uh, with black ink. Just getting in there. And now, and this is actually just a very thin brush with black uh, with black ink. And you don't want to just soak the the mini in black ink. In this case, you want to actually hit all the spots where where the shadows would lie. And just paint this on, and this stuff kind of just flows right into the crack, and gives you that really really uh, good contrast between the highlight and the and the uh, the low light. You know, in between the fingers and and that sort of thing. You know, the sword's been hit. We're going back over it again and again. That's a really old brush. Hairs are all matted together. So now I'm going in there again. Just really want to make the eye sockets uh, darker. So I think at this point I'm going to touch up the hair some more with my little brush. And I'm going to put some very white highlights on those ponytails and on the on the braids. In my last video, I called braids tresses. Parce que je suis francophone, and in French, c'est pas des braids, c'est des tresses. So here I'm doing the eyes. So uh, again, it's always sort of this horrible process in which you just blot the paint on there. Don't worry, it's going to look great. Because um, you kind of work your way backwards. So first you paint the black, which makes the uh, the circle around the eye, you know, the eyelashes. And then you put the white in the middle of it, which is the uh, white of the eye. And then you uh, you go back in with black afterwards, and you uh, you draw in the, uh, the pupil. And hopefully you don't put too much paint, and you end up with some white on either side. And then you can draw, go in there and just you know you can define the eyelashes. Underneath, I like to just bring the cheek up with flesh paint, which is what I'm going to do now. So the cheek comes right up into the eye to make it a little smaller. I got the lips there. Now you you're about to see me put red paint pretty soon. I'm going to put some red paint into the uh, Oh yeah, here I'm actually putting white a blot a dot of white on the side of the eye and this is just horrible. But anyway, 
Uh, great thing about painting minis is you can just go back and fix it. So actually, it doesn't look too bad. Um, so at this point, uh, you, know, you go back with the black. And, and this stuff, when you're using these minute quantities of paint, you, it dries very quickly. So you don't have to worry too much. In this case, it looks kind of like a botched job. It actually looks pretty good when you get when you uh, when you get in there. I think this is the spot where I put too much white, and it's just eesh. oh, that's pretty good. So you can just put a dot of white on either side of the eyeball, and it looks like the white of the eyes. So there you go. And now I'm going to put in the uh, just horrible blob of red paint. You must be thinking to yourself, "Good God, this guy's making videos." Don't worry, son. It's going to look good. So you put the blob of red paint in there, and then you just go back in there afterwards and paint that lip. And you just end up with a bit of red inside the mouth. So it looks pretty good. After I finished uh, videotaping this, I actually put a dot of blue inside the black uh, for the uh, pupil of the eye, and it looks good. So she's got blue eyes. You'll see it in the picture at the end. And I had the black paint out, so I thought, uh, work on the base some more. Why not? Black base. I didn't put any flocking material on the first three or uh, first four dwarf females that I had done, the grim barmaids, because they uh, had big dresses and they pretty much covered the whole base. These girls uh, are more uh, action oriented; they're dungeon crawlers. And uh, yeah, see there she is. So uh, they don't cover as much of the base, and so I'm actually going to be flocking the base, but maybe a little later. So you notice I painted her blanket blue. And you can see her eyes, you know, you can see her eyes are a little bit blue, which is kind of nice. And so that's uh, Brune, uh, Doom Hilda, Doom, I forgot her name now. Anyway, she's DWA-17. So there's uh, Prioress Dunhilda Moondigger. She's a pretty marvelous fig, and uh, this is a pretty marvelous company, so thanks a lot.